Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I'm going to teach you how to balance the following reaction of C2H2 plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Just in case you're curious, this is ethyne. When you get to organic chemistry, it'll make sense. But in any, in, in any case, in words, this would be ethyne uh, plus oxygen gas yields carbon dioxide plus water. So the first thing is, just keep in mind the general premise is that however many atoms of each element I have on the left better equal however many atoms of each element I have on the right, okay? What I then do just to set myself up is I put in these little, you know, hash marks or these little underlines. Uh, that's going to represent the location of the coefficients I'm going to place in, all right? So after that, I just work with the first element that I see working from left to right. So I have carbon, okay? The subscript of carbon will tell me how many carbons I have. So I have two carbons on the left. Now, on the right-hand side, I want to make sure that carbon is only in one compound. Great, that it is. If it wasn't, I would skip it. I would just go to hydrogen next or something. But there is uh, carbon and only carbon dioxide, and there is only one carbon there. Okay. So now I have to figure out what should I place in this location to balance the carbons. I always place, generally speaking, the coefficient on the side that is lower. Okay. So I have lower carbon on the right-hand side. So basically, I want to place in a coefficient of 2 because what this tells me is this tells me the number of molecules I have. So if you have two, one here and one here, if you have two carbon dioxides, how much carbon do you have in total now? We have two, right? In other words, you can take the coefficient and multiply it by the subscript to find the total of the atom. So if I now have two car uh, carbons on the right, I also have two carbons on the left. Remember, the, if I don't have a sub, uh, coefficient there, it's assumed to be one. So one times two is two, right? You can do the same process. So carbon's balanced. Next thing I'm going to do is move on to hydrogen. Subscript of hydrogen here is two. Subscript of hydrogen over here is two. It's only in that one compound. Great, it's balanced. Let's move on. Next, I notice now I have oxygen, right? I have oxygen on the left-hand side, and now I have oxygen in two places on the right-hand side. Now, what I would do is I would save this for the end, the last thing to balance, okay? And it so turns out that the way I approached it, it is the last thing that we're going to balance. But if you just chose to start with oxygen first, what you would have done is skipped it. You would save this for the end, okay? Now we have to, though, balance it. It's the last thing to do. So now what I suggest is making a very simple equation. Write down the number of oxygen you have here, two. This yield sign becomes an equal sign. Write down the total amount of oxygen you have now. You've got to take into account that coefficient. So it's two times two. Remember, you got two CO2s, and in every CO2, there's two oxygens. So you have four oxygens. Plus then, so you just bring the plus sign down, basically. How many oxygens do you have in this water molecule? Only one. And since there's no uh, coefficient, it's assumed to be one. So one times one is just one. All right. Obviously, this math equation does not make any sense at the moment. Two does not equal five. But that's the whole point of balancing. Now what you have to do is you have this coefficient, this unknown coefficient. You can either place it here, you could place it here, or you could place it here. One of those three locations is better than the others. Just do a little thinking. Which one do you think it is? Right? What do you think? Pause the video if you need and think about it a little bit. The best place to place this coefficient okay, is going to be right here. Now the reason why that is is because whatever value you place in in front of O2, it only affects the oxygen. If you were to place that coefficient, let's say, in front of the water, well, you'll balance the oxygen, but now you're going to screw up the hydrogen. You balance the hydrogen already, right? Now, you can do that, but it's more work because then you got to balance the hydrogen again. But then if when you balance the hydrogen, guess what? The oxygen's probably going to get screwed up or the carbon's going to get screwed up. So what I want to do is I want to place a coefficient there, Okay. Now, mathematically, as we were saying, you take the coefficient and you multiply it by the subscript, right, to get the total. So what you're going to do now, this x in your math equation gets multiplied to the subscript of the oxygen. Now you have a nice little equation and just solve this bad boy for x. So this is 2x is equal to 5. Now this is something you can do, right? x is equal to 5 over 2, or 2 and a half. Now, I don't suggest you use the I suggest actually use fractions. I know you're like, oh no, fractions. But don't worry. It's very simple. Okay? So what you're going to do, go back to here and erase it and plug in your five halves. Now technically this is balanced. Technically. However, it's not complete. The reason being is because you cannot have a fractional value of a molecule. You can't have two and a half oxygen gas molecules. That's like having two and a half people. 
What does that even mean? Two and a half people, right? The average, right? The average number of children in America is like, you know, 2.1 or 1.9. How is that positive? It's not. It's an average, okay? You can, right? People have one, two, three, four, five kids, okay? So you cannot have a fractional value of a molecule. You either have one of the molecule or two of the molecule, three of the molecule. I'm just going to erase this one. Actually, I'll leave the work out. So all you have to do now, all you have to do, look at your denominator value of the fraction. That's going to be the value that you're going to multiply every single coefficient by now. And that's the last step, okay? Now, if you don't have a coefficient there, put in a 1. And all you're going to do is you're going to take this value of a 2, and you're going to go 2 times 1. What does that equal? That equals 2. Then you're going to go 2 times 5 over 2. What does that equal? Guess what? It'll always equal whatever the numerator was, okay? It's going to equal 5. Then you're going to go, what's 2 times 2? That's 4. And then what's 2 times 1? That's going to be a 2. And guess what? It's balanced fully and completely and in the lowest ratio. It's a beautiful method to follow. Absolutely beautiful because it works every single time. All right? And it's a system you have now. And that's it. That's all there is to it. You can check everything, right? You got four carbons here because two times two. You got four carbons over here because four times one. You got four hydrogen over there because two times two. You got four hydrogen over here because two times two. You got 10 oxygen now, right? 10. And somehow that has to equal four times this, right? Which would have been eight. So you got eight oxygen in the carbon dioxide plus then two times the subscript of one. So you got two, eight. Plus two is 10, right? So that all balances. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Got to run. I really do hope this helps. And if it does, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates or friends. Um, and by the way, we have thousands of videos out there for you, not only in chemistry, but physics and mathematics as well. And we have a whole channel dedicated, okay, to helping you perform problems because that's what's going to be on your exam. So yes, we go through concepts, but we go through the concepts applied to problems. The more problems you do, the more problem solving you do, I guarantee the better your test grades will become. But don't skimp on the practice. Okay, don't skimp on it. Practice. I promise when you become better at it, it will become more enjoyable. But you got to have the determination in the beginning to stick through it. Okay, don't give up. Keep going. Reach for your dreams. Take care.